How would you describe growing up in Great Falls? I struggled with it. When you're little, you dream you can do anything. Some dream they want to be a doctor, an astronaut, maybe a cowboy. My dream was to be a professional athlete. Ryan Leaf is a prototype. The height to spot receivers, the legs to escape defenders, and the strength to shed them, plus the arm to make any... Money changes you. If you have character defects that exist already, they are exacerbated. You don't talk to me, all right? Knock it off! Back, Ryan Leaf was arrested Friday in his Montana hometown. Well, I was always trying to tone Ryan down. Always. Ryan Leaf has been arrested for the second time in just four days. I never wanted him to stick out, but he did. Commissioner steps to the podium. What happens? My life ended for like... What about that guy Ryan Leaf from Washington State? <laughs> like 13 years. Break! Well, I think it changes everybody's life. You go from this young man who wanted to realize a dream to this dream coming true and my naivete and innocence of about what what was about to happen uh, was was not available to me I didn't I didn't understand what was about to happen growing up where I grew up coming from a smaller school it uh, it got out of hand pretty quickly and I didn't have the wherewithal to deal with it on life's terms Ryan Leaf is from a place where just about everyone leaves their front door unlocked. High school sports is the only entertainment, and at night, the sky is bigger and clearer than anywhere else. In Great Falls, Montana, in 1992, a quarterback named Ryan Leaf led Charles M. Russell High School to the state championship. I grew up in Montana in a cowboy culture where there wasn't anybody that showed vulnerability. He wasn't humble. He wasn't humble. At six foot five, he was built solidly and was predicted to be a tight end or linebacker at the next level by top tier football schools such as the University of Miami. However, Ryan Leaf believed in his arm strength and intelligence that he would excel under center. He became the quarterback at Washington State and hoped to one day be in the NFL just like former Cougar QB Drew Bledsoe. Ryan Leaf started 24 games in college, and by his junior year, he was averaging 330.6 passing yards per game. That season, he also threw for a Pac-10 record 33 touchdowns, and Washington State won their conference championship. Washington State beat their rivals, the University of Washington, for the first time in nearly 40 years and advanced to the 1998 Rose Bowl, where they fell to the Michigan Wolverines. Now it was Ryan Leaf who was predicted to be an NFL star, and and maybe even better than Drew Bledsoe. Leaf was nationally ranked as the second best quarterback prospect for the upcoming draft, finishing third in the Heisman Trophy race. He lost to fellow quarterback Peyton Manning and defensive back Charles Woodson, who would both be future Pro Football Hall of Famers. Still, with first team All-America honors and the Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year award, along with the second best passer rating in the nation, Ryan Leaf decided after the Rose Bowl that he would enter the 1998 NFL draft. Draft. With the combine roster already set, the committee uninvited quarterback prospect Matt Hasselbeck and Ryan Leaf received the invitation. I was ill prepared for everything that came after playing in that Rose Bowl. There isn't a moment where I look at and I go, Oh, I did that right. At that moment, right after the Rose Bowl was where Ryan Leaf and his small town naiveness would be overwhelmed with his newfound stardom, and his oversized ego would soon ruin his potential. Ryan showed up at the combine 268 pounds and majorly out of shape. On one of his regular appearances on The Rich Eisen Show, while wearing a Los Angeles Chargers hoodie, Ryan Leaf talked about his experience leading up to the combine. What I did the day after the Rose Bowl is I flew to 
to Pittsburgh for the New England Patriots-Pittsburgh Steelers playoff game with my agent Lee Steinberg to watch Drew Bledsoe and Cordell Stewart, two of his clients, mm. play in that playoff game. It's probably a fun trip. Then I went around to some banquet things for the Davey O'Brien Award, ended up in San Diego for the Super Bowl between Denver and Green Bay, uh, appeared on an episode of Arliss. Um, you know, the banquet circuit is what circuit is what Lee Steinberg called it, right? So when early February came around or early March came around, I had done nothing. I had not worked out. I had not mentally prepared. I just showed up in Indianapolis <laughs> and thought that, you know, I had been told that I was going to be the first or second pick in the NFL draft. What, what did I have to do differently? Yeah. You know, you just the things you get told. And so I showed up. Leaf did get a trainer and worked until draft day. Once the time rolled around for teams to rebuild their roster, the Indianapolis Colts, as we all know now, did not select him. They would pick Peyton Manning. The San Diego Chargers, though, would see his size and potential, ignore his pompousness, and went all in on Ryan Leaf, trading two first round picks, a Pro Bowl running back by the name of Eric Metcalf, and a second round pick to move up to select Ryan Leaf with the number two overall pick in the 1998. NFL draft. Leaf received over 31 million and 11 million guaranteed in his rookie contract. So how would he celebrate this great achievement? Well, he would go to Las Vegas and party. Then he would buy a house on the bluffs overlooking La Jolla, and he to this day regrets that purchase as he said he should have selected a home closer to the Chargers facility, allowing him to spend more time at the facility to work on his job. Instead, he took his money and ran wild. He started partying and even missed the last day of the NFL Rookie Symposium, which was a required event. Back my first birthday in San Diego, we threw a little get together uh, at a place called Pasquale's uh, in La Jolla. Uh, I believe the bar tab was fifteen thousand um, dollars. It was an event. I don't look back on any of that stuff and go, ah, I, I, I wish I didn't do that. I wish I didn't have that kind of fun. Like yeah. the Vegas trips. I mean, they, I know what they ultimately became but in the moment. It was a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> it wasn't contributing to me being a better football player in any way, shape or form. Money changes you, right? If what it does is if you have character defects, that exist already, they are exacerbated. When Ryan Leaf reported to the Chargers camp as a rookie, he was so fat and out of shape that he couldn't even run a lap around the field. During preseason games, he was inconsistent, but as San Diego's investment, he was named as the Chargers starting quarterback. The start of Ryan Leaf's career wasn't all too bad. In his rookie regular season debut against the Buffalo Bills, he would throw two interceptions and would get sacked twice, but the Chargers would still win 16 to 14. Week two was also a win. He would win 13 to seven. And then the Thursday before week three, he would get hospitalized for a staph infection. Yet he would still play against the Kansas City Chiefs that Sunday. And this is the game that is notorious for absolutely crippling Ryan Leaf's confidence. Ryan Leaf went one for 15 with two interceptions, four fumbles, and only four total yards in a 23 to seven loss. They say you're only as good as your weakest moments. And in that moment, everyone saw the real character of Ryan Leaf, and it was not a pretty sight. After the game, when he was confronted by a local writer, he cursed at the reporter saying, don't talk to me, all right? Knock it off. Later, on camera, he read an apology off a piece of paper via a deadpan expression and monotone voice, then crumbled the paper and threw it back into his locker. I simply said to them that just because you're a great football player doesn't make you a good person. And to build that foundation from the bottom up, and that will usually, good things will usually follow. You do the next right thing, good things happen. And I, what I did is when things started to go bad, I got defensive and resentful and I didn't reach out and ask for help. And I told them all the time that asking for help is a huge strength. Being vulnerable is not a weakness just because you're a tough football player. You can be a great football player, be a vulnerable, and a good person at the same time. Ryan Leaf didn't rebound in week four against the Giants. He only regressed throwing four interceptions. The Chargers lost seven of Leaf's final eight stats in 1998, and he threw only two touchdowns to 15 interceptions. And I be always believed that uh, because I was a great football player, that made me better than you. 
His Chargers teammates were over the arrogant, untalented Ryan Leaf, with future Hall of Famers Rodney Harrison and Junior Seau going to management about the issue. Junior Seau called for a change and told the media that the front office should, quote unquote, get a guy in here not to babysit, but to win. Of course, I've said this before that my biggest regret was always that I didn't treat people better. That was that was the main regret, I think. 20 minutes into his first training camp practice prior to the 1999 NFL season, Ryan Leaf injured his shoulder. Chargers fans heckled Leaf and even rewrote the lyrics to a song about how much of a loser he was. Due to that labral tear in his shoulder, which is very similar to what Baker Mayfield dealt during the 2021 NFL season, Ryan Leaf would miss the entire 1999 season and even while on IR managed to find himself in hot water. In early November, he got into a verbal altercation with general manager Bobby Bethard and a coach over a workout. The outburst resulted in a fine, suspension without pay, and he had to issue another half-hearted apology. While he was suspended, he was filmed playing in a pickup flag football game in a San Diego park, which was a violation of his contract. Heading into the 2000 season, there was a new feeling of optimism surrounding the San Diego Chargers. Headlines read that Ryan Leaf was recharged and ready to lead San Diego. Now as the quarterback, everyone hoped he would be. He had dropped weight and was listed as an athletic 6'5 and 235 pounds. Even through the preseason, he at least looked like a pro quarterback while on the field. A 2000 NFL preseason Sports Illustrated cover featured him in his full Charger uniform and the title read Back from the Brink. A preseason win over the Cardinals where Ryan Leaf made a couple of big plays going 8 of 13 for 97 yards and was said to be only playing at only 8 85% from his injury would encourage the fan base and even his fellow teammates. From that Sports Illustrated article, Junior Seau said, We're seeing more growth from Ryan in these past seven months than we did in the previous two years. And that's a positive. What he has been able to do is stop destroying himself off of the field and start concentrating on football. But in this business, the only way to gain respect is to start feeding the families of the people in the locker room. With our defense and special teams, we're not asking the guy to be an all-pro. Just throw one interception a game and we'll be fine. It wouldn't be long after this that Ryan Lee would officially receive the bus label that would be stuck on him forever. Once the regular season kicked off, Ryan Leaf disappointed again. Through the first two games, he threw only one touchdown to five interceptions and completed less than 50% of his passes. Three of those interceptions occurred in the season opener, 9-6 loss to the Oakland Raiders, and the Chargers intended to bench Leaf for week three, but the backup quarterback injured his shoulder, so Leaf made the start and posted only a 46% completion percentage, and the Chargers would lose 42-10 to the Chiefs. Then, prior to week Four, Ryan Leaf was out due to a sprained wrist. Later on, the San Diego front office found out that he lied about the wrist so he could skip practice and play golf. In mid-November, he was back on the field against the Dolphins, going 9 for 21 with one touchdown and one interception in the 17-7 loss. And we have a Ryan Leaf sighting. He comes in and what could happen, Tom? You guessed it, picked <laughs> off by Brian Walker. The Chargers only managed one win in 2000, a one-point victory at home against Kansas City on November 26th. In that lone win, Ryan Leaf went 17 for 30 with 177 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. One was a pick six, and he was sacked six times. During that 2000 season, Leaf completed just 50% of his passes for 1,883 yards, 11 touchdowns, and 30 three interceptions. Then the Ryan Leaf experiment was officially over as in that February the Chargers would release Ryan Leaf. Now you have to bear in mind that during this time, the San Diego Chargers were perceived in a very similar fashion as the Cleveland Browns were during the 2010s, a team that didn't really have front office stability that, that were very, very far away from contention, let alone building a winning culture. So this resulted in some teams thinking that, hey, maybe it was the Chargers that were the problem and not so much Ryan Leaf. So in March 2001, Ryan Leaf would get claimed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. During 
During his preseason snaps, he displayed the same old inconsistency as before. Thus, he was listed as fourth on the depth chart and was asked to receive a pay cut. He refused and was released before Tampa Bay's regular season opener. The Dallas Cowboys then intended to sign him, but he failed the entry physical. After the Dallas Cowboys starting quarterback Quincy Carter was injured, Dallas would then sign Ryan Leaf in the middle of the season. He appeared in four games for the Dallas Cowboys, all losses, and threw for 494 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. The Cowboys then released him that offseason. Prior to the 2002 season, the Seattle Seahawks signed Ryan Leaf, but he announced his retirement a few days before the start of training camp. At 26 years old, Ryan Leaf was now number one on the biggest NFL draft busts list, and even the top of the list of the biggest sports draft bust of all time. All time draft bust, Ryan Leaf. That would be the least of his worries though, as soon Ryan Leaf would get busted for a much more serious crime than just being a bad football player. Ryan Leaf would return to San Diego and first spend time as a financial consultant. In May of 2005, he graduated with his degree from Washington State University and would then return to football, taking a coaching position at West Texas A&M, but at the same time he was taking pain pills on the regular and started traveling down the dangerous path of opioid addiction. In 2004, at a major boxing match in Los Angeles, Leaf was in attendance with many celebrities and the announcer welcomed them all. Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, Dr. Dre, Charles Barkley, and then said Ryan Leaf's name. When Leaf's name was called though, unlike the cheers that followed the others, boos were heard loud and clear throughout the arena. Leaf opened up how in that moment was the first time that he mixed the strong painkiller Vicodin with alcohol. My attic brain said what they were saying was that you were just an awful human being. And sure enough, an acquaintance of mine offered me some pills that night. I always felt less than and judged, and I took those pills, and it did exactly that. It numbed it. It took away any pain, any judgment, any fear. I didn't feel better, but it did all that. It worked, and I would chase that feeling um, pretty much for the next eight years of my life. In November of 2008, Ryan Leaf would take a leave of absence from his West Texas A&M coaching job after he asked a player for a pain pill. He resigned the next day, returning to Montana. In a place where he was once a hero, he became a criminal, breaking into homes to go through the medicine cabinets to steal any prescription pills that he could find. So I started looking up uh, open houses on Sundays. You know, nine times out of 10, I'd find a medicine cabinet or a cabinet in the kitchen that had pain pills. It, it, it was a self-medicating thing. We, um, I didn't see a path to ask for help. I'd never seen anybody in my life ever do that. I'd never seen somebody stand up in front of a room full of men and say, hey, I'm really struggling here, can you help me? I just, I'd never seen it. So if you haven't seen anything or how are you ever to emulate that? In 2009, Ryan Leaf was caught and arrested. And after his release, he again went pill searching. He was charged again. And in 2012, he was sent to prison for three years. For the first year in the slammer, his mind was still on getting his hands on opioids. When asked when his low point was, he said, I don't know if I ever had it. You know, I don't know if I ever had it, to be honest with you. I was just as miserable in prison as, as I ever was uh, with without the pills. So, um, you know, I, I think that the true bottom is death. And as long as you keep getting back up, uh, you've never hit it. Then there was this moment when his prison roommate had a heart to heart with Leaf about his attitude. He recalls that the conversation ultimately caused his ego to revert to the back seat, and what he did next ultimately changed his life. I remember a time, of course, when my prison roommate, who was an Afghan Iraqi war veteran, uh, confronted me about my attitude, my behavior, and, and, and I had had many of those moments in my life. And uh, I, I can't tell you why. In that moment, I, I like acquiesced. He suggested we go down to the prison library and help prisoners learn how to read who didn't know how to read. And uh, I started doing that uh, in a place where you're supposed to show zero vulnerability. There were men saying, I, I need help, Ryan. I can't read. Can you help me? And so that, that made my perspective shift tremendously and of course now when people ask me that question I can look back and say okay that was that was at least where I started I wouldn't have kept coming back I wouldn't have realized that I was being of service to another human being for the first time in my life and knew that that you know the narcissist in me had to be 
you know, essentially dead and buried. In 2020, Ryan Leaf made the news in San Diego for the wrong reason once again, as he was arrested on Memorial Day weekend in the Palm Desert. He was charged with a misdemeanor domestic violence charge against his significant other. He pled guilty and avoided jail time, but was slapped with three years of informal probation in order to complete a one-year domestic violence class. In the March before his latest arrest, he opened up about having CTE via a monologue on The Rich Eisen Show. But now, this morning, when I wake up and I looked in the mirror, I'm okay with who I am, flaws and all. I'm a new father, I make a ton of mistakes. I'm a partner who makes a ton of mistakes. I'm a former NFL football player who believes is living with CTE. We know what that is now and what the symptoms are. Can't be diagnosed until you're dead. But because of everything that I went through, I had to address a lot of things. When you are addressing anybody who deals with a mental illness, because they're addressing it doesn't mean it's fixed. And when you know you are living with something that may ultimately change your behavior in terms of impulsiveness and anger and things like that, you have to address it. You go to couples therapy when you don't really have a problem. I go to anger management because I want to figure out ways I can deal with things better. I see a therapist, I work out, I eat differently. Ryan Leaf is now a husband and father and covering college sports on all sorts of media outlets. So far, he's having much success during his second and third chances in life. He can be seen on The Rich Eisen Show, heard on his cheekily named Bust podcast, and during the fall, he calls college football games on national networks. Uh, I I'm in the media now. How the hell does that work? You know, I go from yelling at reporters to now, you know, covering people. It's, uh, it's been crazy, you know. I'm, I'm Ryan Leaf, probably as some sort of therapy, is very open about his story, his recovery and the challenge of staying on track, and shares his story and struggles whenever he has the platform, which is often. When asked if there is the risk that he may fall back into the wrong path, Leaf told Dan Patrick in 2019, There is. There's always that risk because the ego was a huge part of yeah. what took me down that path. But what I've done differently is that I've become part of a program and I've surrounded myself with different people, people who hold me accountable, who I've asked to hold me accountable. And I think that's the best word there is in the English language because it's, it's what your part is in all this. And also I know that none of this can be about me ever again. Like it can't be about me. Even though I may be doing something where people stand up and clap sometimes, if I go speak at an event yeah. and they're applauding me, it, that really has nothing to do with me. It has to do with somebody in the audience who may need that 